Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today I get to do my happy dance because I'm back with my authority gang. There was a couple of months there where we just could not find a time for all of us to get together. And, and so, you know, it was kind of like, ah. Oh. And I finally said to them, okay, are you available at this time? And everybody but our dear Crystal said yes. So hopefully next month, maybe all four of us will be back together. So welcome Carol Boston, the queen of Reframe and Samantha King. If you've ever, ever thought of doing an online course, Samantha is the person you need to talk to. So welcome ladies. So glad to have my authority gang back on the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, good to be back. So I was, <laughs> I was thinking about tonight's theme. And one of the reasons was, is I've been going back and re-interviewing some of my favorite guests from the last year or so. And something has been consistent throughout in what they're saying. And one of the things was they were all talking about consistent action. And I, I mean, they don't know each other. But it was like almost almost every podcast episode at some point they talked about consistency. And I thought, okay, there's a theme going here. And I was thinking about, you know, the four of us and, you know, what's been going on in our businesses over the last few months. And I thought, you know what? Consistency has played a humongous part. So I put that in our Facebook group message and Carol puts, is that because we've been inconsistent? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> <laughs> Which I hadn't even thought of, but that was really good. So first, I thought I would just quickly, because we actually never got to talk to Samantha about this. But, you know, back a couple of months ago, you had a major event. And we wanted, let's just take a couple of minutes and talk about that event. So first of all, what was it? What did you did? And, you know, what results did you see from it? Yeah, no, I'd love to talk about that. I mean, really, this, this is a signature virtual event that I do twice a year called Friend Zone to Authority Island. And it really is about, you know, getting out of the friend zone with your audience. And how do you know you're in the friend zone? Well, chances are that nobody's converting, nobody's taking action. You're struggling to get people to even just take your free stuff, let alone <laughs> buy, right? So, and we want to get you out of that friend zone to Authority Island. And that really is the place where you are seen as the go-to expert from your audience. So we did a virtual summit around that and I had expert speakers come in, both of you were there, um, and really to, to help people get through this. And the, the results really, you know, yes, it was impactful for the audience, of course, but let's talk about the results of it from a business perspective, because this was a lead generator. Right. It was a bunch of us coming together, introducing each other to our audiences in a collaborative form. And it really helped us all kind of move up to that expert status, authority status instantaneously because our audience trusts us. And we're saying, hey, here's somebody who's worth who's worth giving a listen to, guys. So really, you know, that's what this summit was from a business perspective. And then it moves into what's next. So I know that we're like, we're here to talk about consistency, but I love that you said consistent action. Cause if I hear the word consistency or be consistent one more time, I'm, I'm going to smash my head against the wall because, and I'm going to tell this to you honestly, because it's become this buzzword that we're like, if you want to win be consistent. Well, I can sit on my couch consistently and watch television. And you guys know, I love to do that. Um, but that's not going to do it. Like that's not an action that's going to do anything. Right. So it's about that consistent action. And I'd love to throw a bit of strategy in it because for me, there was, yes, the sales at the summit, but then there was what was next. Mm -hmm. Right. So what did I do with the new audience I gathered next? And then how did I monetize that? And then what's the next piece? Because I understand my customer journey. So it's not just consistent action for me, it's strategic action to get them what they need to get them from point A to B because I know what they need. And now I, as, as Carol would say, as the, as the conduit or the vessel, am here to like get them to that point. And that's how I best serve them. Wow. So were you able to add a substantial number to your email list? 
substantial number to my email list. Uh, we had, and, and again, good, good sales, like a return on investment in terms of sales. Um, I did have a good number to my email list, but I also had a good retention rate, right? Because sometimes we subscribe to these things, we go to the summit, maybe we buy the VIP pass, maybe we don't. But then after a little while, we're like, okay, yeah, summit was great, but I'm done now. Right. Like I came to you for the summit and now I'm out. Right. When we do that, we all do that. Right. Yep. And so the retention was about 70%. Nice. Which is a pretty good retention. And the conversion oh, yeah. on the sales page and all that stuff was about 80%. That's, that's really that's good. Super high. Yeah. yeah. That's super yeah. high. It means you did your job well. I did, but you know what guys, I am not, this is a thing, right? Just like you know, it's, I always love hearing Carol because Carol inspires me. She gets my mindset going. I'm jiving. And I always hear those, those, uh, what, what do you call them, Carol? The writer downers, right? Yeah. Copywriting is not my specialty. So I had somebody come in and yeah. do the copywriting. Mm. I worked with somebody to organize the summit to help me figure out the strategy, right? And, and I saw a return on all of those investments. What I put into copywriting came right back. So awesome. it really is, you know, it, it's about, I think when we say consistency, it's not about trying to do it all. It's about trying to do what we are good at. And cert, like I said, understanding that customer journey so we can consistently show up and serve our audience. Because that's the only way that we're going to be able to do what we're here to do. You know what, you brought up such an amazing point there, Samantha. And that is, it's not just consistency and it's not just consistent action, it's targeted and it's not everything, right? Um, I don't have a physical copy of the book, but uh, on my Kindle, I have the compound effect by Darren Hardy. And in the book, he talks about small actions done over a long period of time and how when you do the right actions over a long period of time, and they don't have to be big actions, they just have to be the right small actions. Over a long period of time, you hit that, you hit what he calls the tipping point into momentum, mm -hmm. where all of a sudden, all of that action takes on a life of its own. And yeah, actually, and I think- I need to go back and reread that book. <laughs> yeah, because what we get stuck in, and Carol, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but I think what we get stuck in is like, consistency is another one of those buzzwords, like passive income, right? And I'm like, I don't even, like, what does that even mean, right? But I think one of the things is, is that we get stuck in the like, how do I do this, right? When my course creators come to me, that's what we're talking about. I'm like, okay, roadmap, let's go. Let's build out our roadmap. But Carol, do you find with your clients that you work with that it's like that mindset piece, they get stuck with like, I don't even know how to start taking consistent action. Or as you said, Kim, compound, compound effect. Like how do I steady steps in the right direction? So a big piece of it I'm hearing is, it's in perfectionism. It, the step doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be, if it'll just move you forward. And so one of the things, it's interesting that you asked that question because I just spent 11 days up in New York City with Crystal and I interviewed one of my other past clients today on my show who happened to be referred to me by her. And they both brought up something very similar. When I went to Crystal at her apartment, she goes, I got to show you this. And she pulled out a journal and she says, this has changed everything for me. And she took to heart what I taught her about, she plans her day the night before, but it's three simple, bite-sized, digestible, doable actions. Yes. And she does them and she celebrates and she does the next one and she celebrates. And when she accomplished those three for the day, and maybe she has an hour left or whatever she's devoting to this business, oh, I can do another one. And what they both said is they got to that bigger macro goal faster than they realized and they weren't even aware, oh my God, we did it because they're focused on the little things. And so I think it's important to do doable things, not big complex things, because when it's complex, it's just interesting. We don't do it. We just think it's interesting. Yeah. I think for me, like I need to know, I need to know where I'm going. That's how I'm going to be consistent. Right. And, and my clients come to me because I'm like, okay, here's the path. Right. But to your point, that's a double-edged sword because then what happens? Then I'm like, oh, there's all these things going on and now I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I start looking at it as this macro piece and I'm not, then, then I, there's that greater chance that we can get overwhelmed, right? And that's the power in the micro, the doable task. 
Absolutely. And, and oftentimes when I'm asked or my clients talk about being overwhelmed, I tell them I don't believe in overwhelm, right? Overwhelm is a feeling. Mm-hmm. And I tell them when you're overwhelmed, you're, you're in my world, you're one of two things. You're either uncommitted or you're unprepared. And you figure out which one you are. If you're unprepared, then what three things can I do to get prepared? And if you feel like, well, I've got the preparation, I'm just not committed. Then we ask some empowering questions around that to understand what's at the root of that to get you recommitted to what you said you really wanted. And I think one of the things that you brought up in my mind is we don't own a goal. The goal is always out there, but we own our intentions every day. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to set those three or four bite-sized doable things and your intention is to complete them and celebrate them, that's where the success comes in. Mm-hmm. I think overwhelm too sometimes has a basis in fear. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's. It allows you to stay stuck. You just tell people I'm overwhelmed and you sit there and do nothing. It's a cop out. It is. I know sometimes with me though, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I, I know that, you know, I'm afraid of almost what if it's like, it's like that fear of success, yep. you know, what if I do all of this? and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. What if I do all this and everybody else gets the glory, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And and, 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 and don't get me wrong because you know, there's times like the other two things you mentioned are are definitely there, but I I known sometimes with myself, it's almost like I go into overwhelm because I'm afraid to try. So like you said, overwhelm becomes the cop out, right? Like I, I've, I've got too much on my plate. I can't do this. I can't move towards that. But then when I really look at myself, it's like, can I really not move towards that? Or is it just, I'm afraid to move mm. towards that? Yeah. Right? Or I don't know. And, and I think it's interesting that you say that because people bring up like fear of failure. But for me, I'm like, but what about fear of success? Right. And I think it is too, for me with when it comes to overwhelm and like to say that we don't all, we all feel overwhelmed in our lives. Like, let's be honest. Yep. But to Carol's point, usually it's because I would, I would agree that it's because I'm unprepared, probably because I have like 50 million things I'm juggling right now. Um, and, and I sh- should have said no to more things because no <laughs> is a complete sentence, people, right? Um, yes, we like that one. <laughs> right? No we is like a complete that. sentence, That's people. A- I have it on a t-shirt for sale for you. Um, but really, <laughs> it, it comes back to that piece, right? And, and I think the other, it comes back to that piece too, though, for me, sometimes I just don't know what, and, and I think this is again, coming back to what Carol said, right? We want to know what the right first step is, right? It's not even if we're like, okay, here's the first step. Then there's that when you're in Stuckville, there's time as Carol said, to second guess yourself. So now you're like, you're like, okay, well, this is what I think I should do. Now I'm going to, am I going to spend six hours going, well, is that the right thing to do? Or should I do this? Guess what, guys? You want to know what the right sales copy is or the sales funnel, the right sales funnel is? You have to actually try something. Yes. Well, I was going to say, sometimes you just do not know until you do it and you try it and you test it. Now, I mean, there are some things in business that are kind of immutable and, you know, you learn it, you do it. But there is so much to being an entrepreneur, you know, that I learned by trying and it not working. Mm -hmm. And people will say, well, you failed. No, I didn't fail. I just figured out the way that didn't work. And now I've crossed one more off my list and I'm closer to figuring out the way it does work. Right. To me, it's not failure. It's just experience. Yeah. Thomas Edison would agree with you. I don't know if you've ever heard that quote. Thomas Edison's like, I didn't fail, but I found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Right. And it's like I said, when I was talking about my summit, I was like, you know, we had this conversion rate. We had this retention rate. Could we have had a better retention rate? Yeah. I sat down at the end of my summit and went, okay, now what could I have done better to improve that retention rate next time? But I had to first evaluate, like you said, the one thing, Kim, that you missed there that I was going to have is, and you have to track, right? What worked. And, and I, and I totally agree with you. I held a webinar series, live webinar series. I don't do a lot of live webinar series with my community. I do it a lot on other people's platforms, but I did a live webinar series and you know what my audience, some people showed up, more people watched the replay. Mm -hmm. There's two things we can gather from that. One, 
They like, they just want the content Two, chances are they just want the content in that way. They don't need it live because they're used to getting YouTube videos from me. Cause YouTube is like my content flagship. That's my authority Island where like everything that I, mm-hmm. that I teach is there. I'm the expert on my YouTube channel. They're used to just getting a YouTube video that they watch. They watch it on their own time. So I looked at that and went, okay, no, it's not that my numbers were low on my webinar because I was actually trying out some different things with webinars, but my audience, I learned, just record the video, send it to them. Yeah, That's what they're there for. And the ones who want to show up live, I can use a platform like Restream, do it live. Then it becomes a YouTube video and send that to my list, right? So it's about, okay, what did I learn from this? What are they telling me that they want, right? It's like kids, right? You give your kid peas and they throw it back at you. They're like, oh, you know what? They probably don't want that. Now I'm going to feed them something. Let's feed them something else, right? It's a trial and error. So true. So true. Except Brussels sprouts. In my house, you had to eat one Brussels sprout. I don't care whether you like them or not. You ate one. Well, see, normally- I like Brussels sprouts, but my kids are autistic. They don't eat anything. But with my son, he refused to eat anything green. So it's like, okay, son, you occasionally have to have green in you. So you've got your choice. You can have this green or this green, but you are having one green. (laughs) And it would take him forever to eat that one Brussels sprout, but he was not getting down from the table because that kid needed green in him. Uh, But you know what? Something that um, I was kind of thinking of too is I was thinking about, um, I probably mispronounced his name, but Pareto's rule, the 80 20 rule, right? Mm-hmm. How yeah. do you figure out that 20% that's going to give you the 80% of the results mm-hmm. unless you try something? Mm-hmm. You do, like you it, try it. And then sometimes you just find out, you have to go down a path to find out what you don't want. Yeah, and that's another it's, important piece. It's yeah. like, and I know that, you know, Sam helps her clients with this. They feel like they have to be married to their niche. Mm-hmm. And you don't, you can date your niche, right? Mm-hmm. Just like yeah. I'm putting together a very high end mastermind that is very narrowly niched female mm-hmm. family lawyers. Yeah. My second mastermind might just be entrepreneurs. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go down this path to find out what it, what it brings me. Cause I've had great success with female family lawyers, but mm-hmm. I'm very comfortable in knowing, you know what? My second one might be something else. Exactly. Right. Well, it took me two to three years to really down, narrow down, you know, the niche of an each niche. You know what? I hear it both ways. I can't even, I don't even know which way is Canadian. Yeah. It's um, like GIF and GIF. Which, <laughs> which one is it? Right. Just, just say it the Canadian way. <laughs> yeah. Which way is the Canadian way? <laughs> I don't know. I'm American. I'm looking to you for that. <laughs> um, you know, but it took me two to three years to really narrow that down you know, to really narrow that target market, to really narrow my systems down, to really think through, you know, who, who was it that I wanted to work with? And some of that came through trial and error. Some of that came through some really nightmare clients that <laughs> Whoops. if I, I could have afforded to fire them, I would have. So I, I learned to put different payment systems in place so that I can fire people when I need to. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're very good though, Kim, about trying things out. Like I know when we last uh, were when we were last on the podcast, you had been trying out some different posting strategies on Facebook and really tracking what that looked like and how and how that was going. Like you were going live at a certain time, and I know Carol, who has a Monday Facebook show, you know, before you decided on that date and time, you tried out like you went live a bunch of different times and tracked Absolutely. it. And I think yes. you know that's the thing. Everybody wants this imperfect action, but you know what? You have to just try and go down that path. And assess it and then make decisions that make sense. If it's not working, then maybe you need to pivot. If it, if you're like, mm, I think if I just pivot like this much, I might get a bit of a better result. Let's try that out. Right. Well, what I came to realize was that the Facebook's lives just weren't really doing it for me. Mm-hmm. But um, with the exception of a couple of months this summer, um, so to all my wonderful podcast people, if, uh, if you wonder why two months went by when there was no episodes, um, I was actually posting them, but I was using a new hosting web software. I didn't realize I had to update the RSS feed in every single podcast app. So I was posting them thinking you were all getting these <laughs> wonderful episodes. And for a month, nobody got anything. So uh, that was an adventure. 
Uh, but what I came to realize was that, you know, podcasting for me has been great, right? It's a long-term thing. The other half of that coin has been Clubhouse. And that's where I'm seeing a lot of results. So, you know, for, you know, doing a, um, so let's say half an hour Facebook live, you know, either myself or with guests, you know, I might get one, two people watch it. Very few people commenting on it. You know, I just, I was not getting the results I needed yet. You know, if I join a clubhouse room and I'm in a couple of very high-end clubhouse groups um, that let me do my own uh, rooms, uh, you know, I'm getting like three, four, five new subscribers every time I do a show, right? So, and these are people who will now be notified every time I do something. So can we talk me- about that though? Can we talk about the fact that you, you did the, t- you did the research to understand that like, yeah, the podcast is where I get the best results. Mm-hmm. And when I talk to my clients, you, that it's about, you know, deciding on your content flagship. So now you know, your podcast is your content flagship. So then you have to drive traffic to your content flagship. Mm -hmm. So you weren't like, oh, I'm going to do more Facebook lives. I'm going to be on Instagram. You went, oh, I have a podcast. Where are most people who listen to podcasts probably hanging out? Clubhouse. Uh, On on Clubhouse, right? Um, So yeah, that's where I'm going to dive in and spend my time. And you don't have to be, you don't have to be everywhere, right? That's the other thing. You don't have to be on every platform. Yeah, like I, I love I love the way you said about taking imperfect action. Like when I first started my craft cocktail show, remember that third week and I'm sitting there, I'm like, where is every there's nobody there? I'm like, where is everybody? Crystal said she'd be here. Beverly said she'd be here. So I did my show as if people were there. And I got off of the show. Now remember, guys, I'm the one that said I don't want to have a Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so I get off the show. And I'm watching the replay and my friend Beverly texts me, when are you going live? And I said, I did. She goes, no, you didn't. And I said, I- I'm looking at it right now. She goes, you didn't go live on your page. I'm like, what? I went live in somebody else's private group. I don't, even know how I, did it. <laughs> I don't even know how I did it. So I just showed up the next week on my page and I said, oh, that's okay, guys. Those drinks were so bad. I poured them down the drain and I just started over. So I love what you said about you took action. It doesn't have to be perfect action. And now how many people show up to that show and how many comments are on those videos, Carol? There's hundreds of of, hundreds of comments. And sometimes we have 45, 45, 40, 45 people on there. It's incredible. And as a matter of fact, I'm looking to change that model to monetize that because I'm investing a lot of time. It's no longer a 25 minute show. It's a 90 minute show, not including prep and cleanup. So Mm -hmm. my coach is like, yeah, we got to talk about a couple of models to to start monetizing that. So Mm -hmm. one of the people that's there very consistently, I had a call with her this week and I said, yeah, I'm thinking about doing this to monetize it. She goes, absolutely. People will still come. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 And people are connecting with each other. I know I was there once and yes. people wanted, we, you were connecting us in the comment section mm-hmm. and, you know, then they were connecting with me. And so business is being done yes. in, in this Facebook, in this Facebook channel, much like what Kim is saying about her experience in clubhouse yes. business is being done. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's not that Facebook doesn't work for me at all. You know, my mm-hmm. author to authority group is going quite well. You know, Mm. I'm getting a fair amount of engagement in there. And, you know, my focus right now is just building numbers and building community in there. I'm not monetizing it as much, but building relationship in there, Um, you know, and as we get a little bit bigger and really once I release my book, because that's been a lot of my focus right now. So my goal with the group is just to keep consistent, you know, be posting consistently so that, you know, people are engaging, they're commenting, you know, they're they're talking to each other, those types of things, right? As I prepare for something else. And, you know, I think, you know, consistency in social media, if it's more posting, right? Like I'm not talking necessarily the Facebook lives and all that other kind of stuff, but, you know, in terms of posting, if you can create evergreen content. So one thing I did back, I don't know, spring, early summer, um, you know, as I paid someone to make me make me 200 motivational quote graphics, mm-hmm. right? And then I just put little things on them. I put it on an Excel spreadsheet. You know, I numbered the graphic, I numbered the wording. And then, you know, it's a matter of once a week or whatever, once a month, I just go through and copy and paste, right? Set it at the same time each day. 
you know, go through, I can do a month in about 30 minutes. Right. And then that's consistent comment and content. And because I have like so many of them and, you know, with Facebook right now, you know, people don't see as much, you know, I can rotate through and people will never remember they saw them in the first place. So I've got, you know, I've got two or three, four months of reusable content that I can just keep doing. Um, one thing I did is I've been putting together a list of Facebook group engagement questions, and I've got about a 90 or a hundred of them that I cycle through. So almost every day there's a group engagement question, right? That keeps people active. I haven't been promoting my business and things as much because like I said, I'm doing the book, but I'm keeping the consistent action so that when I am ready, the group's going to be there. And I've got people, um, I made the group, like there's a very ultra public group you can have now on Facebook. So I changed the group to that. And so now I have people finding it and joining it on a regular basis. And I'm, I'm not even. What really does that mean? Ultra it. public. I haven't heard of that. What does that mean? Ultra public. They, there was a new public Facebook group format that you could go to. I don't remember what they called it, but um, I don't know, quite a few months ago now, they, they, they brought it out and they basically, it just makes your group more findable. Like it, okay. it's, it's very, it's very public. Like there's, you know, there's really no privacy and people, even people um, not in the group can comment. Now I have it set up that I have to approve their comments first. So it's not a free for all in the group, but because I did it that way, a lot more people are seeing the content and they can comment mm. on it without joining the group. But when I approve it, now they're part of the group. Oh, okay. So that's a good education. It's just, a, it's just a different setup. And I think, you know, Facebook and Instagram are both kind of, they're almost like how I, how I look at it is, and, and you guys know me, I'm not a face, like I'm not a Facebook person, um, but they're, but they're, you know, That's they're, almost, <laughs> they're, they're young adults, right? They're, they're starting to shift and change and, you know, things have been brought to their attention that don't work and they need to, you know, so I think they're kind of going through what I call growing spurts. Right, they're going through growth spurts, and so different things are happening. And now is the time more than ever to try stuff out and see what happens. Yeah, well, no, that's awesome. You talk about trying stuff out. When I interviewed my client today, she goes, "That new thing you're doing on Instagram, that's what got my friends' attention. Those are awesome." Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't dream that up. I have become very consistent three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, for the last three or four months, emailing to my list, giving content. And Crystal had this idea. She goes, I want you to take that. And then Carol, don't over deliver. Don't give them anything else except what's in the email. So I started doing like 90 second videos and she's putting those out on Instagram. Um, that was me just trying something new and apparently it's catching somebody's attention. So great, we'll continue doing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like I've been um, not for the, the publishing side, but, you know, for the craft side, like I've said on the podcast, I love to craft and I'm trying to monetize it so I can afford my crafting hobby. Mm -hmm. So I've been building out this YouTube channel and, um, you know, fairly consistent, not completely consistent. I I've, last couple of weeks just been really hard to try and get videos recorded and up because it's more you got to record the video, you got to edit the video, you got to figure out keywords, all this lovely kind of stuff. But um just because I have been doing it over the last couple of months at least you know semi-consistently I'm up to over 8,000 views on my videos um I have like 126 or 27 subscribers you know so I'm like okay so this consistency factor is working consistency on YouTube at least it's the consistency and the proper keywording proper but what does, that, what does that mean this has been on my mind for the last five minutes and I couldn't grab my question what does consistency mean to you? What does consistency mean on a different platform? And what does consistency mean to a particular audience? Because it's not all the same. And how do you determine that? Again, I think a lot of it's working with mentors, right? So when I started the YouTube channel, I just started watching a lot of the really big people on YouTube who talked about growing on YouTube and what they did. So I've been watching their videos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just learning different things. So one thing that's been successful for me is doing the YouTube shorts. So that's less than a minute. So, okay. you know, I might. Um, so I've been doing, 
you know, Dollar Tree finds for your crafting. So, you know, I'll find like something like dry erase marker. So I'll talk for less than a minute on, you know, how you can use dry erase markers to make your crafting better. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and then I post that as a YouTube short. And it's got to be a vertical video. So I've been, you know, I got a new phone that's got like, you can't really see them, but it's got all the fancy cameras and that on them uh, to do. For, ver for those listening, vertical videos under a minute. Is anybody else hearing like TikTok reels, right? Yeah. <laughs> How well, can we repurpose content? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and you, I, and I knew you were going to say that. Uh, <laughs> and, and to be honest, I've thought about it. But with the amount of time that I have right now, if I tried to do all of that, I would not be able to be consistent. Oh, no. And that's the thing, right? No, no, no. And that's the thing. You don't, we don't need to go back to like Carol said, we don't need to go back to overwhelm. What you were saying about your Facebook graphics, your motivational posts for your Facebook groups apply here. Yeah. Once you got the YouTube channel up and running and you're like, oh, the systems are down. Everything's like, I got the systems down. Everything's going. You've got all of these like vertical videos for under a minute. It's like, can I turn these into reels? Can I turn them into TikToks? Yep. How can I, when that's the time? But I think people feel that they have to be everywhere in order to be consistent. And for those of you who are watching the on the podcast, you can't see this, but I'm air quoting consistent, right? <laughs> um, because I think Carol's question is right. Is like, what does that even mean? To me, it's, it's taking action every day towards my goal. Yeah. That's what it is. And it isn't always, Hey, I'm going to be on social media. Cause guess what? That doesn't always pay my bills. Right. right. It's how, what am I doing? And so for me, I have to know the roadmap, but I have to practice. That's a muscle I have to practice because like I said, my clients come to me cause I can see the path through. Right. I have to practice the muscle that Carol said, which is what are the doable actions? What are the smaller doable actions right now? Because yeah. sitting it down and going, I'm going to have a 5k month, which we all see ad nauseum on social media. That's great. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to find $5,000? Right? What right. are the smaller actions and how do you break that down? And so, you know, when I'm working with my clients to create their authority Island roadmaps, that's what we're doing. We're going, okay, where are we going now? What is the action we're going to take right now? That's what consistency well, is to me. And I think it's important too, you know, as an entrepreneur that you prioritize the right action. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, the, the social media stuff and the YouTube stuff and the podcast, you know, mm -hmm. there's times I've had to take breaks from it because, you know, the, one of the most important things I do as the owner of the company right now is I sell the packages. So if mm -hmm. I, if I'm getting, you know, overwhelmed or, you know, not overwhelmed, but I have overbooked myself, mm -hmm. you know, or I'm having all, a good month. Yeah. I'm busy. Yeah, but doing doing all these other things, and yet you know the priority itself of you know selling packages so that my company stays open and I can afford to pay my my staff, right? That mm -hmm. ultimately has to take priority in the business. See, mm -hmm. you know, I think people sometimes I think we have to divide some of the things we do. Some mm -hmm. things you do in your business are long term growth. Mm -hmm. You know, this podcast is long term growth. This this mm -hmm. podcast. I'm doing it consistently to build audience over a long period of time, right? Yeah. YouTube, it's the same thing. You know, I'm building it so that over the long haul, I will see the results that I want. Now, that doesn't mean you don't see any results at all, but you don't see, you don't have the ROI that you need in the beginning, right? Like you're putting all this time and effort in and you're not seeing the ROI. And sometimes you just have to do that. But I think there's, yeah, there's a lot not of always instant gratification. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think we've been, you know, you talked about, you know, the misconceptions of that 5K month. Well, mm -hmm. if you're going to do a 5K month, you know, you better know your numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. If, mm -hmm. if you're selling $100 items mm -hmm. and you want a, a you know, a $5,000 month, I think it's like 50 items or, you know, 100 items, whatever. I, I'm too tired to do mental math. Whatever, right yeah, now. whatever that is, the audience right? can get out their phone and on their phone, they can open the calculator app and figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is if, if that's your goal, you know, how many people do you need to talk to, to do those sales? You know, what is your if, close if, rate? Yeah. If you're, if you're online, how much traffic do you need to drive and how much do you have to pay for that traffic to drive it to whatever it is you're doing online? Right. If, if it's, if you're, model is online 
you know, how much money do you have to invest in the traffic to get the conversion rate, right? And that's what you were talking about in the beginning is that conversion rate. So, you know, I think, you know, we talked about all these things, but I, I think one of the things we'll close with, because we're kind of a little bit over time here, back to the beginning again, what the right actions, mm -hmm. right? Because you can do prioritize things. Just, right? Pardon? Sorry, Samantha? I said, and how do you prioritize it? Just because you can't, just because, so for example, using that YouTube channel, right? Just because you have all these YouTube shorts that would be perfect for TikTok and reels on Instagram, just because you can do that doesn't mean you have to do that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and this was the other thing too. Like I'm, I'm thinking, you know, down the road, um, you know, when I've monetized it a bit and, and, and earning a bit of money, is, you know, now I can start doing the TikTok and the Instagram and <coughs> all these other ones, but I won't be doing it. I'll be paying someone to be taking all this content, you know, because that's the other thing too, is, you know, just because you have to do consistent action does not always mean you have to be the one doing it. Yep. The only, I always say the only thing you really need to do in your, there's two things you really need to do in your business for me anyway. Well, let's actually three things. You have to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. You have to do whatever it is that you do, right? I mean, Carol, Carol's got to show up and work with her clients, right? We all have to do whatever it is that we get paid to do. And the third thing is you have to do the strategy. You have yeah. to be the one that's steering the ship. Those are the three things you have to do. The rest, you can start to slowly, as, as, as it becomes po possible and profitable, you can slowly start giving out. But I think there's, you know, Carol, you probably work with your clients, three empowering questions, right? To, to figure out why it is you feel that you got to do all this. Like you got to be everywhere in order to be, and I'm using those air quotes again, consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we work with empowering questions, they're specific and time bound. It's what one thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is today. Yeah. And it keeps you, it goes back to the intention to keep you focused on the intention for today and getting clarity on what that is. And that's mm -hmm. little, those little steps every day. It's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, whatever the quote was, little things done consistently turn into big things. Yep. Yep. Well, we're running a little bit over time. So we got to tie this up. Carol, what's your thought that you, one thought you want to leave everybody with today? Oh my goodness. One thought after all this good content? I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so hard on you. <laughs> you are. And you made me go first. Um, one thought. I would go back to something that I've said before, take the next step. Doesn't have to be a perfect step. Take the next step, trust in the process and be able to look at the results without judgment. It's not about, oh, that was terrible. No, it was just like, that just didn't give you the exact results you wanted. Mm -hmm. Take what you like from what you did, Sam's word, pivot, and then add to it and then look at your results the next time so you know your numbers. That's what I would say. Awesome. Samantha. I think one of the things that I would say is don't get hung up on what other people are telling you. And, and this is social media, guys. I'm talking about social media, the people around you, right? What other people are telling you that success and consistency look like. You get to define what that looks like in your life. And I think that's the biggest, most freeing thing I say to my clients all the time is, well, what do you want? What do you want? It's yeah. like it's like um, Ryan Gosling yelling at Rachel Adams in, in the notebook. What do you want, right? I just and watched that like last weekend or the weekend before it was on TV. Right? I told, I've told you guys before, I think in TV terms and movie quotes. Um, but really, like, it's about what do you want from this business? What do you want this business to do for your life? And then go from there. Be clear, right? Because that's what it is. This is we, you only live once, guys. So the business needs to fit in within the life that you want. And it doesn't have to be the hustle culture. It doesn't have to be the seven-figure years or the, set, the six-figure months. It's whatever you want it to be. And I think that's where you should start from before you decide what consistent action is or what your roadmap should look like. I so agree. And, you know, my last thought was, um, you know, we look at these people and Samantha's air quotes. Um, who have air quotes, instant success. If you really look at it, there was years and years and years of preparation that went into there. Okay, I, there is the rare person 
There is the rare person who has had instant success. So we can't say it's never happened, but you know, if you look at most successful entrepreneurs, you know, they become this overnight sensation and you, you don't see the five to 10 years they put in to become mm -hmm. that overnight. I, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that because one of the things we all bring to the table is all of our years of experience. You look exactly. at the story about Pablo Picasso sitting outside at the ca cafe, right? And this young lady recognized him and you know, took her napkin up and said, can you draw me a picture? And he said, sure. He draws her a picture and he goes, okay, that'll be $40,000. And she's like, what? You did that in 20 minutes? He said, no, honey, that took 45 years, right? Yeah. So we have to give ourselves credit for all the things that we've learned and done. So we know that the value we bring to the table every mm -hmm. time. Exactly. Awesome. Well, we might have to continue this conversation next month. This has been a wonderful conversation. Don't forget to connect with Carol and with Samantha. I'm going to put their, their links in, in the show notes here. Um, you know, if you've heard what they've said and you're like, oh, I need more. I can tell you for a fact, if you contact both of these ladies, they will share at least a little bit of their time with you. So anyway, this has been Carol Boston, Samantha King, and Kim Thompson Pinder, the Authority Gang on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you on the very next episode. Bye now.